Guitar practice session 10, 16, 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then give you a recap of the practice session so you get an idea of what you're getting into, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize what I'm trying to learn, possibly provide information to others, learning similar stuff, possibly also provided for feedback. If anybody sees a different way to do the types of things that I'm doing, I do think that actually presenting the information as though someone's listening, even if no one is, is useful because it forces you to kind of verbalize things in a way that you would not otherwise do most likely. So if anybody wants to take these resources and make their own practice sessions, such as this Excel sheet, we'll try to provide that. Don't worry about plagiarism. You can adjust it or do whatever you want with it. We have other courses that get into Excel and how to manipulate the Excel worksheet, but you can do minor adjustments as we're doing here uh, very easily. And the worksheet's a little bit different than what you might see elsewhere in that one. Of course, it's in Excel, which is the best guitar tool out there. I don't care what software you're using it. It's not better than a spreadsheet. It's not better than a spreadsheet. And uh, it's going to be from the perspective of you playing the guitar from behind the guitar, not from the perspective of someone else playing at you but from the perspective of you playing, which means that from the behind the guitar, we've got the low or heavy string on top, top to bottom, left to right from the same perspective as if I was playing the guitar. I'm gonna flip around my guitar so it looks like I'm left-handed. So once again, you can kind of imagine from your perspective, playing your guitar lined up to the same orientation as playing my guitar, as well as lining it up to the fretboard so we can spend all of our time just figuring out the shapes on the fretboard and not reorientating the guitar, spinning the guitar fretboard around in our mind and rotating it and whatnot. So this time I, I get into a little bit about the Phrygian mode again, but I'm trying to get to the objective now of looking more at applying these concepts of the intervals to playing different chords. And so my end goal as I'm trying to basically get my practice sessions together and focus in on a goal. I'm trying to structure what that goal will be. That goal is basically that I would like to be able to play any of the modes and then be able to think of any of the chord constructions from any relative position in any of the modes by using a comparison to the major key, which will tell me not only if I have a major chord or a minor chord, major triad, minor triad, but also tell me, I'm gonna call them modal chords, meaning I'm gonna name the chord by the mode that it is in so that I can then see all of the different notes that I could play in a modal uh, chord. Meaning if I play a mixolydian chord, a three note chord will still be a major chord, but if I was to add the seven, then I'm gonna be, I would know what type of seven to play if I call it a mixolydian chord, which I know will still be in the same key that I'm looking at if I was playing in the Phrygian. And that's why I think it's, it's gonna be useful. Now, that might not be the same way anyone else wants to learn it, but I still think even if you don't wanna do that, it's useful to kind of follow along because also what we're gonna do here then is try to figure out if I was to note any uh, position on the fretboard as I go through my scale shapes on whatever I'm playing. And then I determine if I wanna build a major chord or minor chord from it, I would like to know number one, what's the default chord I would like to make? If I was on top and I was playing an A minor chord, what is the default chord I would play from here? And then what's my second most favorite chord? And then what are the other options that I can make for a three note chord, which there are a surprisingly many of them for many of the places on the guitar, some having more options than others, given the fact that you could go above that note or below it. I'll do the same for then a, a major shape. If I had a major chord constructed from a note on the top of the guitar, what's my go-to shape? What's my second favorite shape? What other alternatives do I have for a three note chord? What if I go to the second string and I'm playing a major shape from the second string and it wasn't in open position, then what would be my go-to shape? What would be my next favorite shape? And what are all the other options I can play a three note major chord from? What about on the second string and it's a minor chord? Favorite shape, second favorite shape, all other options to play a three note chord from. 
What about on the third string down, which people most likely have less familiarity with because most people when playing bar chords focus on the top two strings. But what if I'm playing through my 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 oct my scales here and I get to this string and I'm like, I want to make a chord based on that F. Then what if it's a major chord? How can I, what's going to be my go-to major chord? Then what's my second favorite chord? And then what are all the different ways I can play an F, which there's going to be many because I have a lot of options both above and below this, this note. So actually just even a three note chord, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can play it, right? Which is going to give you different voicings. The more voicings you know, the more options and variations you can play of a particular song, even in, in essence, the same general area, right? And then I could do the same thing if, if I looked at a, a minor, like the A minor here, what would be my go-to shape for a minor on that string, a major. They're going to be similar in construction because a minor and a major, if I'm building a triad, has the same fifth. It just has a different third in it. So we can see the difference between a major and a minor that way as well. And then I start to go down to this string. I would like to do the rest for this string, but I only get to the C and then I, and then I tell a joke somewhere around there and then I get tired and I stop. So what I'd like to do is continue this project maybe tomorrow and then do the, these three strings thinking about just the triad. And then once I have the triads down, the next step is to do it again, but say, now I'd like to add the seven and then maybe figure out all the ways I can add the seven and then maybe figure all the ways that I can add a nine. And when I think about the seven and the nine and so on, maybe I look at it from the perspective of just the major key, adding the normal seven, nine, 11, and 13, and then look at the minor keys, adding the seven, nine, 11, 13, and then look at all of the modes, just looking at the distinctive difference. Meaning if I went to the Mixolydian, it has a distinctive seventh. So that's the one I want to focus on. That will be the differentiating factor from all of the chords, the seven chord in this case, that I would make for a major compared to a Mixolydian. If I went to the Lydian, it would be the fourth. So then it would be all of the chords would be the same, except for when I add the fourth, which is equivalent to the 11th when I build my chords. And then what are the, what's going to be the difference or distinct chord I can build, which I would call a Lydian chord, right? It's going to be a Lydian chord that has a, a, a set, an 11th in it, which will be the distinctive factor from just a major chord. So if I say it's a Lydian chord, same triad, one, three, five, it's a major triad, same seven, same nine, same 13. But I know that if I go to that 11, which is the fourth, and I call it a Lydian chord, I could say a Lydian chord with an 11, then I, then I know what, what it's going to be. Now, why don't people normally talk like that, I believe, is because it's possible to make chords that, that don't fit in the same key, right? I could make a chord here that doesn't fit into any of the modes. That's unlikely, most likely, you know, you, but, but you could, and you still need a, a way to describe them possibly in relation to the main major and the main minor. But if, you, if we can describe the chords by mode, then that will tell me if I'm in the same key or not, right? Because I could just say I'm playing the related mode to the Phrygian, which is, happens to be the Dorian or whatever. And therefore, I know that if I build a Dorian chord based on the related Dorian, then I know that all of the notes that I build from it will also be in the key that I'm in, which is the Phrygian, right? So that's, well, that's what I'm trying to do. Continuing on with what I would call shape number five of what I would call mode number three, that being the Phrygian mode, remembering that we are using an absolute mode numbering system based on the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode. Scrolling up to the major scale or Ionian mode, we see the relative positions first through seventh on the left. The notes related to those positions in the key of C, therefore no sharps and flats. The next practical thing that people will typically learn is how do I convert these notes, these relative positions into a three note chord, either a major or a minor chord. And we will typically learn that the one, four, five given by the uppercase Roman numerals will be a major chord, the two, three, six minor chord. And then the funny seventh is going to have a minor third, but also a flat fifth, the diminished uh, chord. We would like to learn beyond that though, what is the full mode 
related to each of these relative positions because that will tell me not only the one, three, five, but it'll also tell me the other intervals so I can start thinking about more complex chords, which oftentimes when we say a chord, we're basing it on like the major and or the minor scale when we name the intervals in the chord, when we add the seven or the nine or the 11 and so on and so forth. But when we're trying to play in a particular key, it might be a little bit easier to say, hey, look, I'm in the key of the major key and I'm re playing a related, the related D Dorian uh, chord with a seven in it, right? Or something like that. If I'm playing the D chord, uh, the Dorian chord, then I know that I'm still gonna have a one, three, five, which is gonna have a minor third if I, if I know the modes. Obviously, part of the problem here is when you're communicating with people, what, what's their communication system? But I would think to get the most information for your own mind when you're trying to wrap your mind around these things and play in the same key would be to say, hey, I'm going to be playing, a, go into the Dorian chord, which of course is a minor chord with a minor third, same as a minor chord. But if I then say I'm going to play a Dorian chord with a seven, then I know the, the interval related to the Dorian that it's going to be a minor seven, right? If I start to learn these intervals. This is where the intervals can come into play. And if I say, you know, it's a nine or so on and so forth, I know the distinctive interval that's going to be different in, in each of the modes and therefore I can build the chord. Now, in order to do that, we got to remember that when we build these chords, we skip every other note, one, three, five, but we're still just basically making the same scale, uh, which would be the Dorian scale, which would be related to the C major scale. So we have the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. The 9, 11, and 13 just represent the even numbers that we skipped. So we have the 1, the 9 is the 2, the 3, the 11 is the 4, the 5, the 13 is the 6, and then the 7. So given that, we, that's why we can just basically think of these chords that we're going to construct as we can call it a Dorian chord. We can call it a Phrygian chord. Instead of going to play, I'm going to play the related E Phrygian chord with a ninth in it or something like that. Or the related E Phrygian chord that has the second, the, the ninth is going to be the distinct one because it's the second. All right, that's the idea. Now, the other problem that we have is that when we go to these other modes, then we want to be able to convert these notes, which are the same notes, to... Uh, the chords, the related chords, which gets a little bit difficult because they're in a different order. So if I looked at the, the modes here, they're in a different order. I can't really just say, well, if I'm in Phrygian, the, I can't say the same thing with the major that the 1, 4, 5 will be major and the 2, 3, and 6 will be minor and so on and so forth. But I can use the major key as kind of a Rosetta Stone to help me as I'm kind of memorizing these relative positions so I can orientate myself a little bit more quickly. And that's what we're practicing doing when we go to the relative positions of the other mode. So we're not scared of shifting to the other mode, but still able to convert that information to know if I'm going to build a major chord or minor chord by using an absolute mode numbering system, naming the modes on the relative position to the major scale, because that helps to orientate us to then use that practically to make chords, at least knowing major or minor chords, and then possibly building from there to know the other kind of complex chords, not just what those chords are, like memorizing, oh, this is another chord with an added nine in it or something, but, but to know, like, does that fit in what I'm playing, right? It's not very practical if I can finger a shape, but I don't know if it fits in the thing that I'm playing, right, or not. If, if, I'm, if I'm adding another note that's outside the key, I want to know that, right? Uh, so that's that's the point. Okay, but before we get into that, I'm getting into just the idea of how can I efficiently learn uh, my my chords uh, on from each note. So if I was to go through any of these notes, no matter what scale I am in, and I end up on a note here, it's like, okay, well, how would I build a chord off of that note? If I, if I know it's a major or minor chord, then, then what, where, how would I go constructing it? And I'm going to start with the triads because I'd like to be able to say, I'm trying to get a system down for this. I'm going to say, well, one, I want to know what's my go-to shape on each string. What's my go-to shape on each of the strings if I wanted to build a chord from it, either on the major chord or a minor chord? 
what's my second favorite sheep that I can use, and then I can get into more exotic sheeps that are still three note pentaton three note uh, chords, but they're just going to be reaching. Uh, a little bit more awkwardly, right? So that I can get into more unusual shapes, which could be useful because they give you different voicings that are that are aren't unusual. I'm not going to spend a lot of time thinking. Well, what type of inversion is it? What what is the octave that I'm in? Because I'm not. That's not what I'm into right now. But you could totally do that if you're trying to transpose like classical music or something onto the guitar. You, I'm I'm guessing I've never done that. <laughs> I'm guessing you'd have to do a lot of thinking about that, what octave am I in, and so on and so forth. But for me, it's just like if I'm if I'm improvising more in like a bluesy or jazzy style, I just want to play something that sounds cool, that is different. So I want like I would like a variant of a chord. So then once we get that, then then I would like to go and then add, see what's the systematic way I can add a seven, what would be my go to position on each of these strings to build a chord and then add a seven and then the nine which is equivalent to the two and then the 11 and the 13 and then hopefully do that for like all of the modes right uh later but that's going to get messy so let's first just think let's go through like the middle of the guitar and just picks majors and minors somewhere uh in the middle here so i can go through all of the different shapes all of the different options we have to make chords so let's start with like Maybe start with this C over here. So let's go up to the to the C uh, Ionian because that's going to be based on the C. And let's look at this. Let's look at this C out here because it's got all of the options, right? So it's on the top string. It's a major. It's a major note. So it's like okay, if I if I got that C now, the first thing most people would do when they build a chord in my mind would be okay if I tell you to build a C major chord, but not here. The first thing they do is go to open position. <laughs> Right? <laughs> There's your C. Well, what if I could say play somewhere else? Well, then you're probably going to find the C like up top and play a bar chord, which would be an E-shaped bar chord like this. That's what most people would probably do for the second way uh, to play the C shape. So that's probably what I would say the go-to shape is. If I see, if I get a note, I'm like, oh, I want to make a, I want to make a chord off of that. I've got to determine is it major or minor, and the related modes that I'm in, it's a major, therefore it's going to have a major third. And then if I do the lean forward position, it would be here, here, it'd be an E shape bar chord, right? Du, du, and then that and then let's copy and paste, boom, and paste that. Now, obviously, I don't have to play the full bar chord. But there is kind of a problem with this bar chord in that I do have to play down to this third. So if I analyze this bar chord and like, okay, what what's the deal with this thing? I've got I've got a one, I've got the five, right? It's a five because it's a power chord, which is a seven note away perfect fifth, which I can prove by saying that's five, six, seven, and then I've got the octave, so I don't really even need this one, but I have it, and then I've got the third way down here. So the third is kind of a the third is kind of a you have to get down there now. I think it's a little actually easier on the major because you're going to grab that third with your ring finger, therefore it's going to ring out. Whereas in the minor, it's going to be back here, which means you have to make sure that's right on your knuckle oftentimes. That's the one that you might miss and you'd like to hit it because that's going to give you the minor feel. That's why I kind of like uh, sometimes to play these shapes from the lower position here like this and drop this C and play it from here, boom, 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 because that makes me feel like, okay, I for sure got that minor in there, which I could miss with the bar chord. But that's the next thing we can do, of course, is deconstruct this bar chord and note that I could, everything with that, that E in it, like these, that would be, still have the three notes I need, and I could play it down here with that E because that's the, 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 the that's the kind of like, a, what am I trying to say? The funnel, it's the, it's the, it's the stopping point of the funnel, right? It's, it's the choke point, right? So, so that, so you have to have that one in order to get all three notes. So you can kind of build around it. Okay. But I'm looking at this note up top. So that would be what I would call the go-to shape. My second most favorite shape would be this shape, 
This is what I would call the lean back shape. You might call it a G shape because uh, because it's part of that, like a G shape would like this would be back here doot, 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 from a cage system perspective. And a lot of people don't play that shape. You can play it like that. You could try to bar off kind of like this, but then you get, but then notice in this particular shape, all of these notes below it are good. Like you have another C down here, but then, and then you have an E and then an A, which would be the 13. So you might not quite reach that, but you could bar it off and get like most of that. And that's cool. No problem. Nothing's outside the key, but I like kind of doing this sometimes and just getting those three notes just to play those three and muting everything underneath. Now this one obviously is a good, this is really good if you're, if I'm in this shape over here, what I call shape number one, and I want to get to that C instead of going, I can, I can just go and just reach up there. So that's practical to know those two ways to play it, I believe. All right, so there's, now there's not too many more options here because we're at the top, so we don't have anything like above it. So, so, uh, there, so let's leave it at that for now. And let's say, well, let's do the same thing with an A now. So that's the same thing, but with a minor. So let's go down to the, to the minor. And so here's my A on the minor side. If I'm taking my A, then what's my go-to shape if I was on the top string? And I'm like, all right, I want to build a minor chord off of it. Well, then I'm going to go, okay. My, it'd still be a lean forward. It's usually going to be most people would do a E shape, an E minor shape would look like that. Boom. Same shape, except now, now we drop the third, flat the third. And this looks like an E minor shape from a cage system. Boom. I can deconstruct that. Notice again, the problem is with that shape is that I have to get down to this C, which is right on the knuckle, which is oftentimes where the bar gets difficult. Which you might want to double, double up your finger so you get a little bit more pressure. And also don't be afraid to hang your knuckle over the top. That's cool, you know, no problem. If there's a lot of meat hanging over the top, that's okay as long as you're barring it off. You don't need to like put your pointer on it sometimes because that's going to arc your finger which means the knuckle's not going to hit and you're going to miss the third. All right, so then, so, so, but I could de deconstruct that to this three, right, which is, which is useful because, so that's useful to play like this, which I do all the time because once again, that makes me feel like I've got this C for sure and then I can mute the string above it if I don't want to play that and I can mute the strings below it if I don't want to play those and then I could take these three and play just those three. So those are just, uh, breaking down the 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 big the big bar chord around the 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 bottleneck that's what I was looking for <laughs> of the C because there's only one C in it but I'm looking at the note to the top again so what would be my second favorite shape from the top it would be a lean back now the third instead of being here is back here so notice it's it's the same concept but now I'd have to it's a little bit more difficult most likely to play I have to reach up like I, can, I don't have this one right next to it but it's not that hard at all really and again if you're playing down here in open position it's really practical to, to reach up and get that one uh, again you could try to bar it off uh, it's a little bit wonkier to bar but I usually just grab it if I if I bar that one off notice I want the A but I don't want this note so that's why it's a little wonky to bar. If you're in this position with that particular A, it's kind of cool to keep the rest of it open too, because if you keep it open, you reveal the seven and then the nine and then another E. So it's no problem. Those are all in the key. This gives you a different sound. So that's my, those are those two. Okay. Then let's say that we go to, let's say that we go to a shape underneath. Let's say we go to like, this C. Let's go to this C. So now we're, so let's go back up to the C and say, now I'm on a major on the second string. So I'm on a major on the second string. My, sh my go-to shape, so here's on this C. Obviously my go-to shape on that particular string is probably like an open C. But let's imagine that 
it, w it was not at the end of the guitar in open position and say if it wasn't in open position and I was on the second string and I was playing a major what would be my go-to shape most likely a lean forward a shape from a caged system perspective so I'd lean forward an a shape be like which most likely most people play like that and if I analyze that I've got a I've got a one I've got a five I've got a three I mean a one again and the three is way down here which again is kind of an issue because that's like the one that you're most likely to lift up your bar and miss and you kind of need it there in order to get that shape in so although that's the most common shape it's not really like my favorite shape all the time because it's like because that, that one is important you can play okay so but anyways so then what's my second go-to shape well that would of course be the lean back shape which would be here duh, duh, duh. and that's our normal c shape now if i play it here there's my c shape this one's kind of interesting because if i was not in open now i have to play that open this open g notice if the c was up here uh i'm sorry let, let's say i was playing on this g way up here just for argument's sake then if i grab this g that's that's going to give me a double of the g what i really want to do is grab that that there's the fifth right there right so if i was on like this g i would need like there's the fifth so this C position actually kind of messes us up a little bit to see the the full position if you were not in open position, because if you weren't in open position, you wouldn't be grabbing the C shape, you'd be grabbing your pinky there most likely, and then grabbing back here to get that open G. So that, that would be my second go-to shape, but I still do the C shape down here sometimes, and then I just mute, like if I grab this, G, then I can just mute this G string right there. Or in this case, I could play it out because I'm in the key. Of, I'm in a plane of G, so that'd be a lot of G's. Right? But I could just mute it out, and then I'm losing the fifth. But that's cool because I still got the flavor of the of the third in there. So I think that's and that's easy to play. So that so it, so it feels like a C. Because if you do the if you do the fifth, you've got to grab that with your pinky most likely, which is a little bit more uncomfortable and then you could grab this one. anyways that's my second go-to shape now this one notice that it has this bit on top of it so if i was playing a c like this here i can i could switch these fingers and put this on top so that's nice now again that's kind of a problem if i was up here like where the g is because again, my, my last finger is down here and, and it should be back here, which is gonna be difficult to reach that. I mean, you could. But even, even reaching that, what you're doing is doubling up the, uh, the fifth, which you don't really need to double the fifth up, like that's a strong fifth. So you'd almost like to grab this one, might even be better. But, you don't really need this bottom bit at all, right? I could just remove that and just play the top three. And now I'm playing a C with the C in the middle. So, so, so this is where it gets kind of wonky because again, if I counted all the ways that we can play a shape, how could I see the shape? I have a lean forward shape, which I call this quadrant. I've got the lean backward shape, which I call this quadrant. I've got the reaching up shape, which I'm going to call this quadrant. And then I've got the reaching up and back, the reaching back shape, which I call this quadrant. That would be, if this was the end of my three notes, that would give me four possible positions right there. But then I also have the C in the middle. And if the C's like in the middle on the top on this quadrant, then the, that's <laughs> see, this is where, see if the, if it's in the middle then uh then the fifth could be on the top in this quadrant or it could be 
and this quadrant or this quadrant or that quadrant and, and then the third could be on the top right so you get so there's actually a whole lot of options once you start to break it down so in this case but in, it's, in this case the c's in the middle right okay so now i've got at the minimum i got the fifth on top and then i've got the third on the bottom and the c's in the middle all right that's probably my third favorite option all right and so so now i did i did i leaned forward i did a lean backward and then i looked above and the and i looked above but it's only one string so the only thing i could pick up is that one i could pick up the third above which means i would need the fifth below so here's a fifth over here so in this position that's doable because i i uh I, I don't need to, the, the fifth is an open string, so I could reach up to this G. Wait, where am I? But if it wasn't open, I'd have to reach like here, here, and here, which is quite a stretch. Let's do that uh, up here somewhere. Like if I was looking at this G, It'd be a little bit better if I was looking at this G. I would need the C here, and then the the D there. So it's not too bad, actually. When you're up in the higher register, at least. So I might play with that. Kind of like it. So so those are those are the ways I can play that one. And so then, so I had, I had a, my fifth up top, my third up top, and then the fifth on the bottom and the third on the bottom. There was a, okay, let's stop it there. All right, let's say that in the, let's go to this D and do the same thing on this string, but say it's a minor. So let's go to the Dorian. So now we're on the Dorian. And so here's my D. So now it's like, okay, what would be my go-to shape? My go-to shape, once again, would be a lean forward shape for a D, which would be, from a cage system, an A bar shape, which would look like this. So here's my A shape here. If I was to bar it, it would look like that, which I can move up here. So there's my, my D minor bar shape. If I analyze that, I've got a, what do we got? I'll tell you what we got. I can't put my finger, my pinky, my pick. I've got a one, I've got a five, I got a one, and then the third is way down here again. But it's likely I'm gonna grab that third because I'm gonna put this finger on it. But I could, I could just uh, deconstruct this full bar chord again and just play these three. these three or I can play these three but I'm focused on the top bit right now so the other my second most favorite way to play it would be to find the third behind it and this would be like a C minor shape you might think of it as but remember I'm not going to grab this C down here I'm gonna grab the fifth. I mean, not this C, but this first. I'm gonna grab the fifth. So again, it's a little wonky to do that for most people for a while, because you pretty much have to use your pinky. You could stretch up here. I was trying to do that for a while. And if you wanted to do something else with your pinky, that's kind of doable. Like if you wanted, you could do that. But probably most people put their pinky up here. And then this top string, it's kind of hard to mute the top string with your pinky. And you can reach around with your thumb and mute it. But you also could put this finger on top like this and mute it. So now I'm muting these two strings. So, and that's kind of nice again, because if I'm playing an open position, I've got this, you know, an open D. kind of cool so 
actually, I, I've been playing with that more, although it's uncomfortable at the beginning, but totally, totally worthwhile. It might be easier again to play with the guitar neck up like this on like more of a classical like style because that puts your thumb more behind the neck if you're doing these re more of a reachy positions. If you're in one position like this, I think it's not as bad, but, or you can put it on your right leg, but you're probably gonna have to put, you know, a stool under your leg or something, and you're still gonna have to get your finger behind the guitar uh, in order to, your thumb's gonna have to go down so that you can start reaching like this way more. Which means you're gonna have to, if you're doing muting and stuff, it's gonna change your whole muting thing. But there's that, and then, so then, what else could I do? Well, well, I could, if I had this, I could try to say these two, like I could try to, but that's not doable, but I could just take these through, and that's quite common. So now this is, this is my like third favorite shape, where I put the D in the middle now. If the D's in the middle, then the fifth is on top. And why do I know the fifth is on top? I might, I might say, if I didn't know that that was a fifth, I could say, well, I know from, I know I'm looking for a fifth to be on top. I know that a fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth. The inverse is 12 minus seven, which is a five note away perfect fourth. So if I was looking for the note up top for which this D is the fourth, it would be the A. D is the fourth of the A because it's a five note away perfect fourth. Therefore, the inverse A is the fifth of D. So I'm kind of looking at this just from the color coding, but I'd like to be able to do it with a guitar, like without the color coding, and then just be able to, to say, oh, where's the fifth? Because we've been learning our shape. I've been trying to learn my shapes here. That's what I've been working on. So, so I can see the distance from here to here, top to bottom more easily. Now I'm able to see that the perfect fifths are inverses from each other pretty, pretty clearly. But if it's something like a, a ninth or something that I'm looking for, the inverse isn't always clear and I can do that little inverse math to figure it out and then look from the top to the bottom. But this is gonna be then, and then this is the third. So, and that's my normal third position. So I really like that position because I can also lift this finger up and then reveal a D to give me a heavy D. So two Ds. Uh, so that's my second most favorite position. So now I've got the a fifth on top. I could try to put the third on top, which is difficult because the third's like way over here, which means I'd have to put the fifth way over here, which is going to be somewhat of a stretch, I would think. So the third would be way over here. So there's no way I'm going to get to the fifth. So that might be cool to have, like a different voicing of the that but there's no way I can reach out to get the fifth down there uh, there's also a fifth down down here like that uh, what the what is happening here uh, there's a fifth like down here yeah the, I'm not gonna reach that either that's ridiculous that's just ridiculous. Yeah, no. So anyway, so that's not happening. <laughs> I don't think at least. Okay, so now I've put, I've tried to put the, the fifth on top and the third on top. Okay, so those are my, I think those are my go-to shapes. Um, let's see. Now if I, I could look, there's my third down here. So another way, so notice this is like an octave up. So the other thing that's kind of tricky is like if I have this, I have the fifth up top and then I'm looking for the third could be somewhere below, but now it's another octave below. So when I'm on these really high shapes, I can really find the third. I can really find, I have two options down below. So I could be like, here's the fifth above and then, and then I'm picking uh, this third right there. Now I'm, 
trying to mute the, the G. I don't have to because the G would be the 11th. And, but, but I'm trying to mute it for this. For, so I could play it like this and mute everything else. Just to make sure I mute it. So, and if I didn't want to mute it, I can play that out. I've got the G in there. Okay, anyways, that's that's that one. All right, let's go to the next string down. So let's say we go to the G here and play a G major. That's going to be in my mixolydian. So let's go to the mixolydian. And so now let's say we're on this G. So now we're, if I choose, if I'm in the middle of the guitar and I'm like, all right, there's a G. What's my go-to shape? It's a major. So I'm like, okay, it's a major. So what am I going to do there? Now, so, so the, in this case, on the bottom three strings, a lot of people might still lean forward to the, to the uh, this is a D shape. But I think for me, the go-to, when I see that, the go-to shape is probably actually a lean back shape. Because I probably am more comfortable with the lean back, which is this here, here, here. And then I typically will put the five on top of it, which is, like my bar, it's basically the bottom part of the bar shape. That's just way comfortable for me to play. And I have a lot of, le you ha it's so nice that you have a lot of grip with all your fingers that you can kind of put different levels of pressure on it so that you get a different sound. And you can lift all, the, all your fingers up if you want to do hammers on. So I like that shape a lot. So that's probably my go-to shape. And then the number two shape for me would then be the lean forward shape, which would be here. And it's a little thin. So I can go boom, boom, boom. That's what I would, the cage system, that would be a D shape because up here you can see that little D shape up top. That's probably my second shape. heavy is this I can go off on that but this one and I'm, mute, I'm muting this E so I could play that E out by barring it off and you're adding the 13 anyway all right that's my second shape now my third shape is still probably within this shape putting it in the middle so that I have, so then I play, instead of this whole thing like this, I just play these three. So those are probably the things that come to mind most. Now, there should be the most options with this shape, you would think, though, because it's right in the middle. So that means I should be able to build like a full chord going up a full chord in this quadrant, a full chord in this quadrant, a full chord in this quadrant, and then I should be able to put the fifth on top, and then the third either down here or down here, and then the third on top, and the fifth either down here or down here, right? You would think. So let's try to say, let's try to say I'm gonna do a reach up chord. So that would be going from here to here to here. So now I've got the fifth right above it. So I always know that there's a fifth above it all the time, unless I'm in the earth, the kink and the tuning. And then this third, if I didn't have it color coded, I wouldn't maybe know where that is like right off the bat. So I, how would I figure that out? Well, I could say, well, I need to find the third, which for a major is a four note away major third. The inverse of that would be uh, 12 minus four, which would be an eight note away minor uh, six. So then I might look on this string and say, okay, where is there, an, because I can't play it on this string, right? Cause I already have the D. So I'm looking on this string and saying, well, which note would it be for which this note is an eight note away minor six, right? And I could say, okay, it would be this B. Why? Because if I count this up, it would be five, 10, nine, eight, or I could count up from here and, and say that this would be uh, five, ten, nine, eight, from counting like in the reverse order, right? So, so that means if from b this B to this C, G, is an eight note away minor six, and therefore the G at the bottom to the B 
is a three note away major third. So if I play this shape then, like this, or I could try to bar it off. I kind of like putting my fingers on it when I can, because it gives me more, again, I can kind of vary my finger touch. Do hammer-ons, or like, put different levels of pressure on my finger. But the barring would be fine, because if I barred it, I might pick up that C. That C is the 11, the E would be the 13, so I could bar the whole thing if I wanted to, like this. So in any case, so that's going to be, that's that one. And so that's my, so let's go with my lean back shape. So here's my fifth. Now I'm looking for a third back here. So, so I'm looking for a third, a third, and I, I don't have one, right? Because I only have this third here. So that's why this quadrant up top on the upper, on the, on the lean back, a reaching back, instead of a lean back, reaching back, I'll call it is often difficult because because just the way it is there's there's often you can't get both the third and the fifth right so then if i say i did a lean forward i lean back if i put the fifth on top then i can put the third on the bottom so that was this one so i already did that i have another option down here so that would be kind of a weird one so now i have the fifth on top and I'm grabbing the third right here. That's not right here. Which I might bar off, but if I bar it off, then I might pick up the 11 and the, the, this one. That's going to look more like a, a C shape or a, 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 an A shaped C chord in the case. So, anyways, and then I have. Alright, alright, and then let's put the third on top. If I put the third on top, I have two options I have a third up here and a third back here. So, let's put this third. And then I have uh, my fifth. So I could say, if I'm here on the G, I have a third, which is here. Uh, and then my fifth is down here. So that's interesting. It's actually not too difficult to play that. Is that right? I think that's right, because because I can mute this string, this open A. If I don't, it's okay, because it's the nine in this case. But I can mute that, and I can mute these pretty easily. So that's actually a doable shape. Huh. Might play with that more. So then I could also reach back to this B, or I can keep it on that B and go back. Instead of going leaning forward, I can go to this B back here. Oh, crap. Oh crap, it's gonna be my Halloween costume. I'm gonna dress up as oh crap. And people, whenever they see me, they'll be like, oh crap. And I'll be like, calm down, just stay calm. I mean you no harm. Oh crap, oh crap is here. That's right, watch yourself. <laughs> oh crap is here. <laughs> Good. So that's actually... It's actually doable. But it's hard to mute. That's actually somewhat doable. Crazy, or is that like I might have to play with that? It's a different voicing. All right. Oh crap is here. Don't worry. I mean you no harm. No need to get excited. Okay, so let's go to the G or the A and do the same thing on the A. 
That's a minor down here. Maybe I should do my joke now. I'm in, <clears throat> in the middle of the joke. Haven't done my joke yet. Let me get my coffee. All right. <clears throat> hey, I, li I like those. I like those shiny little dots that are on your guitar. Those are nice. Those are nice shiny little dots. Ah, baloney. No, really, they're really neat. I like those little dots. Ah, baloney. Why would I? Why would I lie about liking the guitar dots for crying out loud? They, you know what? They kind of look like the inside of like. A seashell. What shell? A seashell. I don't, I don't see no shell. Don't play stupid with me, man. I'm trying to tell you those cool little dots might be made out of a seashell. Ah, baloney. Okay, I'm not even, I'm not even going to talk to you anymore. It's ridiculous. I got some string. I got my strings for my guitar back in play here, <clears throat> which is nice. I had them sent to me. They got past the the pirate, the porch pirate blockade that's over here. We have a mean. We've got a mean porch pirate blockade that's tough to get. It's tough to get stuff past, and this, the ma the mailman's supposed to put it in the lockbox. We've got a lockbox, but they don't do it. They just put it on the porch. I think they're in co they're colluding with the dang porch pirate blockade people, but whatever. Anyways, this, this guitar is strung up, so we're good to go. So uh, we're going to say then, let's go to the A over here and do the same thing, but now we're in a minor. So what's my, if I was on like in the middle, on the middle string, what would be my go-to shape? Now, again, a lot of people would probably think lean forward like this. But my go-to shape would probably, once again, be the lean back shape, which I like to play like this way, like this, boom. So I, that's like almost my favorite shape, really. which is kind of similar to this shape if it was a major, or you might say this shape. So that's that you got that that's my that's that shape now I could bar this off at the bottom uh, and notice this this shape is just of course part of the uh, a the, the E major bar shape so now I'm just playing this bit of it and I could play this whole thing at the bottom so I could bar that off and add that to this shape that I'm playing here off or I could play like these two and these two like that or bar it off and play it like like or just bar this one off and play that a just to get the added a all, all variations of the same thing that I give I think give us a little bit more control than the whole bar chord because you can't it sometimes it's easy because you can't move your fingers or do much as much with it with which is this you've got like there's more activity but anyway so that's that shape and then of course we've got the second favorite which is probably the lean forward shape which we might call like a d minor shape which would be there's the fifth and then there's the the third so i could play it like that so i go boom 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 and then i could just mute i could just mute this string or I can repeat it again to get the full D minor shape that we might recognize in open position, which would be here. But I don't really need that A. I could play it like this. It might give it a little bit full, full of a sound, but it's still kind of light because I don't have the heavy A. Now here, by the way, notice because I'm on the A, I could let this string ring out and not mute it. Heavy A on it, but I couldn't do that anywhere else. Right? And this D shape is like this D shape. So that's that. That's probably the second most favorite shape. And then of course, so that's my lean back shape. I could play these two and this two, or this one and that one. And then let's go to the to the up right shape. 
So if I was going upwards, I know the fifth is above it. So the fifth is the same on the majors and the minors, seven note away, perfect fifth. And therefore I'm looking for the third up top. This time I'm looking for a minor third. Now again, I might not know where that is if it wasn't color coded like this. So I, how would I figure that out? I could say, well, uh, the third is a minor third. So it's a three note away minor third, minor third. The inverse of a three note away minor third is 12 minus three, which is a nine note away uh, major six. So I'm gonna look up here and say, what is what note up here is this note a nine note away major six from? And this shape is what I would see as, as a, a major, a nine note away major six. I can count that out from the C five, 10, nine, or I can count, I can count it up this way and say five, 10, and then nine, if I look at it backwards, right? Or negative five, negative 10, nine, or eight, if you want to think about it that way, if you want to count it out. But there's that. Now that's useful if I'm playing on these top strings. I could also do it with a bar chord because I pick up that D. I like to use the, my actual fingers because then again, I have a little bit more leeway to how much pressure I want to put on them. And if I bar it off, then I have to pick up that D and I want to make sure I don't pick up the this one, although I could put my finger down on that G if I wanted to. So then I've added the D, which is the 11, and the G, which is the 7. So that's kind of a cool way to play the minor 7. And add the 7. But in any case, so, so now uh, that's leaning forward. So, so then I can lean backwards. I've already got the fifth. So the third is back here. Again, it's difficult to grab the fifth and the third back here, but I could grab the third instead of the fifth, which means I could be like, here's the third on the C. So that's kind of cool to know. I could play those at the same time. I'm noodling around. grab much else if I'm doing that and then I could say okay well what if I what if I uh, what if I play on either side so now I've got the fifth above it let's go to the third on this side and this quadrant below and keep it in the middle so I have a third way down here so now I'm like okay well here's I have the fifth above it and then the third is like down here so I could do it like so that's hard to do I could try to mute it but then again I get but if I mute it I don't want to pick up this I could pick up this G or if I can bar it so now I'm adding the the D which is an 11 and the G, which is a seven. So I could do that. It's kind of, kind of cool sound because again, I'm getting that cool seven in there. Uh, so I like that, but that's not what I'm working on right now. So let's go to the, let's go to this side then. So then I've got my minor third back here. So I already did that. That's my go-to shape. So let's put the third on top and say I can pick up this third and then I pick up my f my uh, fifth then down here somewhere. So I could be like, okay, let's do that. What if my third was up here? Then I could pick up a fifth, which is going to be down here, here, right? So that's kind of doable. My fifth would be right here. There it is. So I don't do that much. But that's doable. Because I can easily mute this A. I don't need to in this case. I can ring it out. Double A's. Actually, I do do that a lot, actually. Because I like doing this.
Anyway. So then I could play, I could do the fifth back here. I don't think I do that too often, but that's doable. I skip every other, here's that skip every other string one where it's like, there's the E and there's the C. Interesting. It's kind of hard to mute this string. I can lean it back like that. Mute every other string. If I bar this, might be easier to see. If I bar this, then I'm playing the C again, which is cool. I could do that because that's another third. So I could just bar that. So that's kind of, I kind of like that. <clears throat> All right. Anyways, so that's that one. All right. <laughs> this is taking a long time. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not going to get back to the Phrygian. I'm going to stop after this just to let you know. So let's go down to, to this C then at the bottom. All right, back up here and let's go to this C. What if I had, that's a major again. So what if I'm on this string and I'm like, I want to build a major chord from it. Well, what's my go-to shape? What's my go-to shape on that string? I can't really uh, lean, well, that's gonna be my A shape usually, which is gonna be, which puts it in the middle again, which is part of the A shape like this. So I'm thinking of that, that's my go-to shape, which would be, which would be uh, here and here. That's probably my go-to. And I could, as part of that, grab this one up here, this C, to make to give it a, a more C sound, since it's not the... And that, you might call that a G shape, the bottom part of the G, because it would be like... Right. So, and so that's going to be that shape. So that's going to be... But now, if I think about this, if I try to... And, that's going to be my favorite shape, I would think. And then uh, the lean back shape should is probably my second favorite shape, which would be, well, wait a second. Here, yeah, that's right. Here, here, and then here because of the kink in the tuning. So the second favorite shape is going to be boom, boom. Uh, bo boom, boom, and this G. So I actually don't play that all the time because I, I don't, I should, I should play that more. But that would be the number two shape. Now if I lean forward, if I do my thing and I say, well, what if I lean forward? There's my fifth which is a stretch now because of the kink in the tuning. So it's another, it's another note out. And then I don't have room for the third because remember if I was up here, I'd have the fifth and the third is gonna be three strings down. So I don't have any third over here except for the one right underneath. So I can't play, so I could arpeggiate this way by going, this is the one, three, But I can't really. But I can't really play them at the same time, of course. Okay. So what if I and if I did the lean back shape, then I have then I do have a lean back option down here. So that's nice. What if I put it in the middle? If I put the fifth on top, I have the third on the bottom, which we saw already. I can also put this other fifth, now that we have all this room up top, I could pick up like this fifth up here. And then again, I have this down here, which is kind of interesting because that's just, that's my A shape again, but I'm picking the fifth up top so that I have the fifth on top. 
And then there's my C, my one, five, one, third. So that's an interesting voicing, but I, but it's kind of messy because I don't get down to that vital third till way down here. So, so if I played that, I'd probably be playing both of these fifths, or I could play it like this, which is kind of interesting. I could put the fifth on top and then kind of mute everything underneath it until I get to those. So now I'm just muting everything. So that's interesting. That's kind of interesting. All right, well, let's say, let's say that I put the third on top. I have two options. I have a third back here and a third back here. So let's pick up that third. And then I have two options down here for the fifth back here or over here. Again, I probably wouldn't know like where that third is. So, so I'd probably have to say, if it wasn't color coded, I'd be like, okay, I need a third. And the third is a four note away major third. The inverse is 12 minus four, which is an eight note away minor six, right? So then I'd be like, okay, where on this string is there an eight note away minor six? I could count it up. I could say, well, this is gonna be, I'm gonna say negative five, negative 10, nine, eight, right? And so I could say, all right, there's, and that shape from the E to the C is an eight note away minor six, therefore from C to E is a three, is a four note away minor, I mean, it's an eight note, wait a second, <laughs> major, it's a four note away major third. Okay, I, I think I have that, my brain is going down, that's okay. I'm, I'm losing it. You're losing it, man. I can't. The stamina is gone. Throw in the towel. I didn't hear. I didn't hear no bell. I don't stop unless I hear a bell. Because that's when the food. That's when food happens. Why? Be, you don't stop because you're here. Because you're tough like Rocky Balboa. And you don't hear. You don't. No, it's because I've been trained like one of Pablo's dogs for when the food comes, I stop immediately. And then I, <laughs> all right, anyway. So I could like mute the one above it. It's hard to mute both of these. The one above it and below. So it's not too bad to play. But it's hard to mute the top string if I want to go crazy. So, all right, anyways. So then uh, we have that. Let's get this out. And then, so then I also could say, let's go to this G down here, this fifth. So now I've got, I've got, what do we got? I've got the C here. And then the E's here, and then the G is down here. So that's doable, but it's hard to mute. The I'm trying to see how I can mute. bar this off and I'd pick up the D the D is the ninth anyway I'd have to play with that more my head is hurting I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to stop you wussy okay there's no need for name calling Let's, let's go, let's go ahead and stop it here. So tomorrow I'll go on, maybe I'll do this again on the last bottom strings and we'll keep on going, which means I'm not going to get back to the Phrygian for a while, maybe, but I'm trying to apply the idea of these. So I'd like to be able to say any note that I get on in any mode, my goal, I'm trying to formulate my goal here. I would like to be able to, to know what chord I'm playing, not only triad, but what mode chord I'm playing so I can learn all the intervals. And then I'd like to have my one and two go to positions and then know all of the other 
possible positions with a three note pentatonic, a three note uh, chord triad. <laughs> and then after, and then I'd like to then see all of the possibilities to add a seven, nine, 11 and 13, but those options will be distinctive. I want to know how to add those options per mode because the mode will tell me which of those intervals are distinctive. So then it's going to get messy because then I've got my try. Then you can play those multiple ways, but we'll look for the, so then I'll, I'll map out the normal major and minor seven, nine, 11 and 13, and then look at all the modes for the distinct interval and see how to play that the mode on the distinct interval. That's the project. Okay, at least as far as I see it right now, I'm gonna stop.